massive ecological restoration, the largest in the world, the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, which encompasses 60 some odd major projects. The ecosystem is 50% smaller, so it's half the size that it used to be. It's fertilized with nutrient issues. It's saltier, it's fragmented. So restoration in the Everglades mean trying to address all of those issues, the fertilization issue with nutrients and try to fix that, trying to send the water in a system in a way that mimics natural flows. If there's not any water flowing through the Everglades, that water table can't get replenished. And then what happens is salt water starts to intrude on the water table. And then you start seeing things like salt water in your tap water, you know, and that's obviously not good. Tamiami Trail is a road that was constructed in the 1920s, connecting Miami to the West Coast over to Naples, and then ultimately up to Tampa. And that's where it got its name, Tamiami, from Tampa to Miami. Everglades are part of the lifeline of South Florida. People don't understand that this is the largest wetland in the Western Hemisphere. There really is no other place like it anywhere on this side of the world. It is the source of water for much of South Florida. So the problems that we see in the Everglades are that it's some areas are too wet for too long. So just on the other side of this levee, water backs up against it. And then there are some areas that are too dry for too long. Pretty much all of Everglades National Park and the northern ends of these water conservation areas. The most exciting thing we're doing right now is environmental restoration. Put more water in the Everglades that's clean. It's available for South Floridians too, for water supply. Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan was passed to bring the state and the federal partners together to redesign this infrastructure that we all depend on for our flood control that maintains that level of flood protection but does much better with respect to the environment. A timeline of 20 to 30 years, we're on year 20 of that and progress has been really slow. I think there was a delay in, in large part because it was this monumental effort, 60 plus projects, several billion dollars to, to, to see this to completion. And there's also the political side. We're all confident that we've got the momentum now on our side. We've got the, the funding from the state side. Uh, we're hopeful that we can sustain funding now from the federal government so we can get these projects built in a timely fashion. Look at a plane, and think of the plane as being our world. And each rivet that holds that plane together is a species. And as the plane flies, the species becomes extinct, the rivet breaks off, the plane can still fly. Another rivet breaks off, the plane can still fly. But eventually what's gonna happen is a rivet's gonna break off, the wing's gonna break off, and the plane is gonna crash. We cannot let our environment get to that point where we're allowing so much pressure, so much destruction, that the environment crashes. Because in the end, we're all gonna crash. We've made much progress in getting these projects planned, seeing groundbreakings, getting key foundation projects like the Tamiami Trail Bridge built, which allows for the conveyance of water into the park. But I would tell people that I'm very optimistic now that over the next decade, we can see great progress towards completion of the comprehensive plan. Oh.